Now, in other news, Israelis fighting literal war on one front and a lawfare war against BDS in another. The Psagot Winery in Judea and Samaria, a.k.a. the West Bank, claiming victory in the Canadian Court of Appeals. With the details, we're joined by civil rights attorney and founder and executive director of the Lawfare Project, Brooke Goldstein. Brooke, thanks so much for being with us. Tell us a little bit about this case. Um, well, at first I want to say, to put it all in context, like you did in the intro, we are here in Israel and rockets are literally raining down on us, targeting Jewish people who want to live in peace and security in their homeland. And at the same time, there are people trying to set legal precedents in foreign courts that legitimize these attacks by saying that the Jewish presence in Judea and Samaria is itself illegal and therefore should be labeled differently. And that was what was at issue in the Psagot Winery case. Now, fortunately, we had a victory. The Federal Court of Appeals ruled that it is perfectly lawful to label Jewish products produced in Judea as made in Israel and overturned the, the uh, lower court's decision. And, and what's so significant is that yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was, well, was going to ask, you know, what went into proving Psagot's case? But it sounds like you were about to, about to get to that. Right. So what's so significant is that, um, well, I'll start with this. Relaw, together with the Lawfare Project, represented Psagot Winery. And um, we were allowed as an effective, affected party, excuse me, to make oral arguments and submissions. And what the Court of Appeal ended up ruling was that, number one, the lower court's decision that you could not label it made Sagot products made in Israel was illogical on its face. The decision was sent back uh, to the administrative body. The appeals court said that the lower court had no authority whatsoever to make these types of decisions and sent it back saying that um, the court's decision was not binding. So now, even though we've won this battle, uh, we have not won the war, uh, lawfare, as you said in the beginning, because this is really going to unfortunately open the floodgates now uh, for people who, again, support this racist premise that Jews have no right to live in Judea and Samaria to, Samaria to now make further legal submissions before the administrative body, uh, trying to convince it to reverse its original decision, which is to correctly label goat bottles as made in Israel. So speaking of, of future potential lawsuits, as which you are, are telling me is basically a certainty, what precedent will this have and, and or will have in the international uh, arena as well? So I want to be quite clear that this is an administrative body. The lawsuit happened, we made oral arguments, and it was in the form of an appeal of a, a federal mm -hmm. court's decision. So now the administrative body, which is the one that's in charge of making decisions about labeling, has the authority to continue to do so. Hopefully, and I, I trust they will, continue to make the right decision to label these wines as made in Israel, which also brings Canadian policy well in line with U.S. policy. You may recall that Psagot Winery was also mm -hmm. the plaintiff in a lawsuit that it filed and lost at the European Court of Justice. But even though in Europe discriminatory labeling has been legitimized, what did that do? It created a situation that the United States, through Secretary of State Pompeo, came to uh, Israel, landed, at, and, and had uh, an event at Sagot Winery declaring U.S. policy also to be consistent with Canada's, that we will label these products made in Israel. If a Jew cannot live in Judea and Samaria and work in peace and pray in peace and, and live with their families, our civil rights are violated everywhere, which is why this uh, decision is so significant, and I'm glad it was the correct one. All right, Brooke Goldstein. Thank you so much for being with us.